Hi everybody, if you're tuning in for this video, chances are you've got a Banjitar for Christmas. You stopped at the right place because we're going to talk about how to set this thing up and get the best results out of it right from the get-go. Stand by and get ready. Seven items in order to get your banjitar ready to play quick and in short order. First thing we're going to start with is right here. There's a little cover right here that you can unscrew from your banjitar and this covers what's called the truss rod. Okay, there's a rod that runs down the middle of your neck. If you're a guitar player, you already know about these probably. If you're new to banjitar, it works just like a guitar. You remove this cover and there's a little thing in here and your banjitar comes with an Allen wrench. That Allen wrench is kind of a little L-shaped little key. Put one end in here and you can turn in order to tighten the, the, the truss rod. And it works kind of like a molly bolt. And basically what it does is it counteracts the forward pull of the strings. Now, unless you are getting like a really expensive banjitar, like a Deering or something along that line that's going to be $1,000 or more, more than likely the the truss rod and your banjitar probably hasn't been touched at the factory. They kind of throw these things together really fast and put them out to meet a price point and the setup is often very minimal that they get at the factory. So I have I have three banjitars and all three of them when I got them the truss rod was not only not adjusted it wasn't even tightened down. So if you put the uh, the Allen wrench in here and turn it a little bit and it's really really loose you know it's probably not been adjusted. So you can probably turn it maybe a quarter turn, a half a turn, just right off the bat. You want to check that and make sure it is, uh, it, that it hasn't been adjusted at all, period. Now you don't need to get in there and crank the thing down because you're not going to make the final adjustments until we get the strings tuned up and get the full tension on the neck. But I want you to check that first thing because that's a good place to start. We'll just start at the top. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the back of the banjitar what's called the resonator, and you're gonna take the back off. There's four screws that hold that on. They look kind of like this. Take those four screws off. You wanna keep them safe, you just put them right into the back of the resonator. It acts like a little bowl to hold them. Okay, so now your banjitar does not have a resonator on the back of it at this point. So the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to check the brackets all the way around. Your banjitar is probably going to have anywhere from 18 to 30 of these brackets as you go around. Uh, sometimes, just like the truss rod, these things are just barely tightened down in order just to hold it together for shipping and it hasn't been adjusted at all. Inexpensive banjitars, especially the ones $300 and under, they, they haven't even been touched. Somebody went there with a the little tool and zip, 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 just to hold it together and hold the head on. And it hasn't been tuned or set up for anything. So first thing you want to do, there's another little uh, tool that comes with your banjitar. It looks like a little uh, little open-ended wrench, and that's the one for adjusting your uh, the, the lugs all the way around that hold the, uh, the, the top onto the banjitar. The flange is what that's called. And so what you want to do is just go around, just experiment, just see how loose or how tight they are. If they're really loose, tighten them down about, go about a quarter turn at a time, go all the way around the banjitar, kind of tap the top and see how it's, if it's real floppy sounding. Then just kind of go around. You want to have these where they're comfortably tight, where they're not going to get loose and fall off but you don't want to tighten it down tight yet until, but you just want to check this because it's very common that they're not tightened at all and they're just barely holding on and you don't want to lose one when you start playing it and then the thing starts vibrating and they work their way loose and all of a sudden you lose one. Then you've got to try to find a bracket that's going to fit and it, it, it gets to be a pain because they're not always standard. Now the next thing on my list is to place the bridge. Okay, when you get your banjitar, your bridge is probably laying flat on the top under the strings. It has not been put on. And you're probably wondering, well, where do I put this? Do I put this in the middle? Do I put it, does it make a difference where you put it? It does make a difference. It's, the placement of this has to be fairly precise. Uh, maybe you're a guitarist and you've done this all already. You've set the intonation like on an electric guitar. It's not all that different. 
The idea is the same for all stringed instruments. The nut of the guitar up here and the bridge, that is called the speaking length of the string. That's the part of the string that vibrates to make the sound. Where the bridge is placed is determined by the midpoint of those. Since this is a fretted instrument, the 12th fret is, should be the mathematical midpoint of the string. So you can take out like a tape measure and you can measure from here to wherever the, the, to the 12th fret and then double that. So if this is, you know, X number of inches, uh, 18 inches, 17 and a half inches, whatever the, the measurement's going to be, then you're going to measure to the 12th fret and then come down here the same distance and that's where you set your bridge. Now that is going to be kind of a rough setup because then you have to check the intonation. How do you check the intonation? Well, let me point the camera down here for just a second so you can see. When you check the intonation, I'm trying to hold this on my knees here and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Take a tuner and you're just going to set it right there on the banjo head. You're going to play the harmonic at the 12th fret. And the way you play a harmonic, if you've never done one before, is you take your uh, your pointy finger and you just touch the string. Don't press down. Just touch the string very lightly and pluck the string. And it makes a little bell-like tone like that. And then it's going to show up on your tuner. Mine's reading a little bit sharp right now. I'm not going to bother to tune it, but you'll get the idea. So when I play the fretted note, it should be the same if the string is in tune. You can do this by ear. If your ear is good, you can distinguish the tones. If you're a brand new beginner, you may want to have this done by a professional, but it's pretty easy to do with the tuner because the tuner takes all the guesswork out of it. Once you have the sixth string on there, and then you, excuse me, the first string on there, then you do the same process with the sixth string. You compare the fretted note to the harmonic and they should be as close as you can get them. The way you adjust it is you move the bridge backward and forward. Uh, when you do this part, you only tune up the outside strings. Don't tune up the middle four strings. The first and the sixth string is enough to be able to get the intonation set. Once you have them set, the rest of them will be very, very close because they're all going to be in a line with the bridge. So once you get the intonation set on those two strings, you've got your bridge placed in the, in the right position, then you can tune up the rest of the guitar the, or the band guitar. Now you have a tailpiece down here. This tailpiece, its uh, responsibility is to make sure that the strings have the proper down angle coming off the bridge. That little break angle there uh, basically affects the tone of the instrument and, and help, helps you have proper down bearing. You need to have enough force on there to be able to hold the bridge in place for one thing. And the other thing is that basically the more pressure you have on the bridge, the more volume and tone you're going to get out of it. Now, you don't want to take this to an extreme, but how you adjust this, go ahead and tune up the instrument. Then what you're going to do is press down on this. If there's a lot of flex in it, then what you want to do is just press it down with one hand and there's a little screw back here. And you just tighten that screw a little, maybe half a turn, maybe a whole turn, whatever it might take so that it will sit into place there. And then once this is kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing because it won't really come loose after that. Uh, but you can get the proper down angle. And so those are things that are just generally not checked at the factory very well inside the instrument. I'm going to Flip around here a second, move my strap out of the way. So now inside the instrument here you have what's called a coordinator rod and then you can see the inside of the head. This stuff don't worry about right now, I'll show you that this is the last thing we're going to cover. Now we tighten this down just a little bit, the, the brackets all the way around in order to make the head at least secure and at this point now you are going to tune the thing for a tone. So what you can do is you can kind of strum. If it's real low, if it's real floppy sounding, if it's really really resonant, you know, it vibrates a lot and you have weird resonances on certain notes, or if certain parts of the banjo are brighter or louder than others. In other words, like if you're playing this side and this side isn't, isn't clear, but you play this side and this is real tight and clear, but this is floppy sounding, 
you can come in and adjust the tensioners one more time because now we have tension on this on the strings also one thing because this is a skin head or it's a, you know, a, a it's made out of a, you know, a, a, a plastic of some kind when you when you put tension on the strings this may drop a little bit because you're pushing down on a flexible skin so you might need to tighten up the brackets around the the back here so that you can then make sure that the head has the proper tension on it. how do you do this uh, there are gauges you can buy and they say that for like you know, the guys at the banjo museum here in oklahoma city they set theirs for like 90 pounds i just do it by ear i tune it to where it sounds good and so i just i'll just turn maybe each thing maybe a quarter turn go all the way around listen play a little bit if it's too dead sounding, I'll bump it up a little bit more, but you don't want to over tighten. If you start getting where it's going kink, 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 you're trying to tighten that wrench, you've got it way too tight. And you may harm, you may actually damage the, the rim, uh, the banjitar. So be very gentle about this process and you can do this, you don't have to do this all at once. Let's say you play it for a couple days, you go, I think it needs to be a little tighter. So I have a little bit snappier bass notes or something. Well, then you can go back in there and you can tighten it up a little bit more. Uh, just be real gentle deliberate about the process, play, listen, play, listen. If it takes you a couple of days or a couple of weeks, once you have it in place, you probably won't have to mess with it, uh, but infrequently and as part of just regular main maintenance. Once you have the head set, especially as you tighten this up, the bridge is going to come up just a little bit. Now, maybe you need to lower the action so that it's more comfortable on the neck from where you're playing. One way to do that is with the coordinator rod in the bag. The coordinator rod, some banjos have two, this, uh, this one has one. Uh, this little uh, nut right here is something that you can turn. And if you take a, a wrench and just turn it just a little bit, like a quarter turn at a time, just little increments, then play it. And you'll notice that the action of the banjo, the height of the string above the frets, will raise or lower depending on which way you're turning the coordinator rod. As you turn the coordinator rod, you'll find an optimal position where you like it, uh, where the action will be good. Now you don't want to get in here and start cranking on this thing. Again, like all the other adjustments, we're going to do these just incrementally, play a little, but if you have to, if you have to crank this too much to lower the action, then you might want to look at something like, let me move the strap out of the way here. You might want to look at maybe shaving your bridge down a little bit or buying a bridge that's shorter. Uh, that's a common uh, thing to have to do sometimes. So, uh, one way to shave the bridge is you take the bridge off, put it on, on a flat surface on a piece of sandpaper, and just shave it back and forth. Make sure the bottom stays good and flat. Shave it maybe a sixteenth of an inch off, put it back on there, and give it a try. You can shave more if you want. Again, you're doing this incrementally. But once you have the coordinator rod set, that's going to set your action for you. Now, the last thing I've got here to kind of show you is uh, if you want to amplify your banjo tar, it's very easy to do. You don't even have to drill any holes or anything like that. Uh, this is a little pickup that I put in here. I got it off of eBay. It costs like $4, $6, something like that. came from China. It's a little piezoelectric uh, pickup in a, a little capsule that has adhesive on it. And so just stick that onto the head. I like to stick it uh, where it is going to be between the bridge and the tailpiece, right in this area right in here. That's where I find the optimal tone. But there's other places you could put it. Just run the wire out the side. They give you a little clip, a little wire clip that you can glue on there, or it has some adhesive on it. And then you just put that in place there to kind of as a wire guide. Some wire ties, you know, will, will help secure it. Then just run it out through the, through the hole. There's a gap between the resonator at the back of the instrument and the rim, and there's enough room for this little wire to go in here, and then I just take a couple of uh, zip ties and put the jack right out here. If I ever need to remove this, just snip snip. I can take it off in, in a couple of seconds, and uh, it's pretty easy to remove, and if I wanted to, uh, to put it back on, it doesn't take much more than just a few minutes to mount it, and it doesn't revolve any permanent alteration of the banjitar. And it's good and secure. I've gigged with these things, and uh, they work just fine. Now you're probably wondering about the foam. The foam in here is 
the idea is to, uh, to dampen some resonances. When you play your band guitar, you may find that it's loud and clangy, and you want to have a tone that's going to be a little more warm with a bright, sharp attack and a decay of the note where the note ends suddenly. You know, so you end up with a nice, clean, uh, like a nice clean sound that is snappy and defined. If you think of a drummer, many drummers take uh, like a pillow or a, like a, I had one drummer used a sandbag put in his bass drum and bumped it up against the head. So when the, the striker of the drum pedal would hit, it gave a good thud, 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 a nice clean sound. Without that, the bass drum just sounded like boom, boom, and it was just too much. So if you want to have that solid thud, you need something in there to kind of dampen the inside. So what I use is a little bit of foam. This is the kind of stuff you use for like air conditioning. You know, insulate, you know, insulating around a door or something, and uh, just uh, you can get it at Lowe's or Walmart might even have it. And you can put the foam in your, and you just, how much do you want to have? Well, it depends on your ear and how much dampening you're wanting to do. So I've got two little pieces in here, and I just put the pick, put them around the pickup, and uh, and it gives me the sound that I like. I have two different banjos that I have set up differently with different types of foam. One of them I have a piece of foam that kind of goes across the bottom like this. Another one is an open back one, just has a washcloth. I kind of rolled up a washcloth and stuck it in there. Uh, different things will give you different sounds. So you can uh, try that out. Once you have all the strings tuned up, what you want to do now is make your final adjustment to the truss rod. You got this compartment open up here. Take your, your Allen wrench, put it in there, get ready to go. And what you're going to do is you're going to sight down the strings kind of like this. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the sixth string and I'm looking at the neck of the instrument underneath it. The string is always going to be a straight line. As you look at the neck compared to the string, you may see a little dip in there. If that's the case, you may want to straighten the neck a little bit using the uh, Allen wrench. And so you would turn it to the right. Remember, righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. You want to go to the right just a little bit. Maybe again, a quarter turn. Quarter turn's always the deal. Quarter turn and, uh, and look at it. Quarter turn, look at it. When it's fairly straight, where it's comfortable. Now, if you get it perfectly straight, you may end up with some buzzing because when a string moves, it makes an ellipse, right? It vibrates more, it moves more here in the middle than it does here on either end. So maybe you wanna have a little bit of relief, maybe a slight little dip in there, just hardly noticeable. If you have a light touch, you can get the neck perfectly straight uh, and then you can play as long as you're not being really aggressive without too much buzzing. Uh, if, you, uh, if you find it does buzz a little bit, just loosen it up just an eighth of a turn, enough just to get it. Or you can tweak the coordinator rod a little bit in the bag. And so between getting the neck straight and then adjusting your coordinator rod, you can go back and forth and you can get the action just to where you like it. I hope you find this helpful. If you got a band guitar for Christmas, congratulations. You're in for a fun experience. Turn it back up here so you can see my smiling face. Uh, wish you all Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and uh, if you have comments or questions, drop them in the comments block below, and I uh, always uh, appreciate those and try to answer when I can, and it gives me ideas often for new videos in the future. So once again, thanks for tuning in, and good luck with your new banjo guitar.